नेक्स्ट वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट शटर स्पीड इन एन अर्लियर लेक्चर वी टॉक अबाउट द फास्ट वेट फैक्ट फॉर सेट एज अ मेटाफोर फॉर द परचर एंड द शटर स्पीड यू कैन चूज टू ओपन द टैप वाइट एंड लेट अ लॉट ऑफ वाटर फ्लो और यू कैन ओपन द टैप जस्ट अ बिट एंड लेट द वाटर ट्रिकल इन टू द सिंक वेन वी थिंक अबाउट लाइट बींग लाइक द वाटर गोइंग इन टू द सिंक शटर स्पीड इज हाउ लॉन्ग यू लीव द फॉसेट रनिंग एज वी विल सी इन दिस पिक्चर इन दिस लेक्चर एज वी विल सी इन दिस लेक्चर प्रॉपर यूज ऑफ अ स्लो शटर टेक्स अ पिक्चर फ्रॉम बींग अ मेयर रेंडरिंग ऑफ एन एवेंट टू बींग समथिंग आइकॉनिक समथिंग दैट गोज फार बियॉन्ड द ओरिजिनल मूवमेंट नेक्स्ट इज एक्सपेरिमेंटिंग विद शटर स्पीड्स A shutter speed of one by five hundred of a second is literally ten times faster than a speed of one by fifty of a second. But you can't hear the difference. Both are tiny amounts of time, nearly impossible to perceive. Yet in still photography, the shutter speeds speed makes a world of difference. A field shoot of sparks created by grinding metal shows. the different the difference between fast and slow shutter speeds at a full second the sparks are arcing everywhere the image looks as if it was taken on the 4th of july with the speed of 1 by 500 of a second the sparks are still present but they are not as exciting note that the camera was on tripod the camera was on was on tripod and a cable released was used for this shoot you want to slow the shutter speed down but you don't want to want the whole scene to be moving it's interesting to experiment with different speed but while shooting flowing water an image shot at 1 by 500 of a second shows individual water droplets suspended in air in an image shot at 1 by 10 of a second the water blurs together in a continuous stream next is use shutter speed purposefully most mid to advanced level cameras film or digital offer some way to control the shutter speed if you are using an slr or advanced point and shoot the easiest way to start experimenting is by using shutter priority exposure mode this is often indicated by an s for shutter and t for time depending on what kind of camera you have in shutter priority mode you choose and control the shutter speed while the camera changes the aperture this is simply this is simply a way of experimenting because you are letting the camera do the thinking when it comes to the exposure you can then concentrate on the effect you want a good rule of thumb for choosing shutter speed is this the longer the lens the faster the shutter should be Use one by twenty of a second minimum for a twenty mm lens, one by five hundred of a second or more for a fine five hundred mm lens, and so on. Fast shutter speeds. A fast shutter speed means that the shutter is not left open for a very long. This is useful for capturing action such as sports or other fast, fast moving subjects. The faster the subject and the closer it is your it is to your camera the faster the shutter speed must to be must be to freeze it it fast shutter speeds are more difficult to use simply because you have to fire the shutter at exactly the right moment just as the action you want to capture occurs photos of sand hill screens illustrate the result can be achieved with various shutter speeds image in which the words are completely in focus are taken in plenty of light with a shutter speeds up to 1 by 6400 of a second <coughs> next is in the other image the heads and the bodies of the birds are fairly sharp but their feet and wing tip are a bit blurred blurred 
blurred because those parts are moving more than the rest of the body these images were taken with a shutter speed of 1 by 320 of a second which allows both some sharpness and some movement a shutter speed slow down slowed down to 1 by 30 of a second makes for a dramatic images here the birds on the grounds are fairly sharp but the ones in the air are smudged and barely recognizable mere impressions of cranes the choices of shutter speed you make depend on what what you are trying to achieve how much of an artist you want to be and how fast or slow the sh subject is moving when you are shooting with fast shutter speed anticipating the movement is crucial to getting the hose shot generally speaking with an slr camera if you see a fast breaking movement you have probably missing you have probably missed getting a picture of it watch an event for a bit before you try to shoot it to get a sense of what will happen next and where slow shutter speed of course a slow shutter speed means that the shutter is left open for a relatively longer period of time another world of creative possibilities opens up using slower shutter speeds used properly a slow shutter can convey motion in a still image just a slight bit of blurring is all it takes for our brains to translate a still image into a moving one after you have practi practiced for a while you will discover that slow shutter speeds used well are su uh, surefire surefire ways to add artistry to an otherwise unremarkable setting next is <coughs> next is panned action images a fun experiment to try with slower shutter speed with slow shutter speeds is to shoot a panned action images where you move the camera to follow the subject in the final image the subject is subject is mostly in focus and the background is blurred there are two ways to shoot a panned action picture you can look at the picture which are given below the first is the with the first is with the photographer stationary and a moving subject the second is with the photographer moving parallel to the subject at the same speed it's often hard to find an oppor opportunity to use the second technique when you are the stationary photographer and your subject is moving position yourself perpendicular at a 90 degree angle to the subject's path pre-focus on where you your subject will be when it passes in front of you then follow the subject with the camera get a good start shoot and follow through don't stop moving when you press the shutter or you are li liable you are liable to ruin the smoothness of the long exposure next is panned action is something that only still photography can do well it creates a beautiful blur in the background with the subject sharp although it can be hit and, and miss make things easy on yourself by choosing the right subject the faster your subject is moving the better the pan will be behind the lens photographer said hang out once in a while with the friends of mine I hang out once in a while with a friend of mine a daredevil named Dr. Danger he is one of the last old time daredevils or stuntman out there Dr. Danger decided he was going to drive a junk car through the a wall of flame into a pile of junk cars that's great we have this huge explosion you can look in the photograph that needs a sh uh, fast shutter speed 1 by 4000 of a second or so I had the advantage of it being very very strong light bright daylight and of course the explosion gave me another light burst of light uh, another little burst of light and it all resulted in a very fast shutter speed here is the picture you can go through it next is finally embrace the blur 
we are trained to think that images have to be sharp but that does not always result in the best result in the best in the second technique for shooting pan action the camera is moving parallel to the subject at about the same speed the camera does not move side to side but stays with the subject ghosting and long exposure yes next is combining a slow shutter speed with a flash and ambient light can create an effect of knowing as ghosting no matter how many times you try this technique you will get something different and unexpected this technique involves dragging the shutter which simply means choosing a very slow shutter speed in right order to gather as much as as much light as possible the flash in, is then introduced as a way to free something in the frame ghosting takes a lot of practice to do well but again the result results can be amazing much depends on the speed at which the subject is moving the amount of ambient light available and the right amount of flash long exposures can work well for shooting images that build up the light from the things like traffic weather and fireworks such exposures are the opposite of capturing a moment they use very slow shutter speeds to show the passing of time to take a long exposure image you will need a tripod and way to trigger your camera without touching it in situation in situations where the light is very dim longer slower shutter speeds are a necessity with practice with practice you can make them work to your advantage shooting images of fireworks for example a thunderstorm that's all for the day thank you so much